I don't think Joe Biden is all there anymore. Like, that dude is fucking falling apart. Uh, a lot of commentators were like, yeah, he handled himself really well in that second debate. And I was like, did he? Did he? Maybe that's not what the highlight reels are showing, but holy crap, man. Like, he's not looking okay. Like, he's showing lots of signs of senility. Like, his responses were very slow. He looked very perplexed. Like, when Kristen Gillibrand... Uh, Kirsten? Kirsten Gillibrand... Uh, when she went after him about some op-ed piece that he wrote about, you know, women not working or, or working women are going to be a catastrophe for America. Or I can't remember the exact thing. But it, but it came off like like what he wrote seemed very old school and kind of uh, misogynistic. And, and the way that Kristen Gillibrand was, was reciting it. I, I mean, I haven't read it, but it's also like I'm not surprised that that's something that he wrote. Right? Like, he's kind of had these weird backwards ideologies that are either predicated on traditionalism or, like, economic prosperity for the individual. Like, that's kind of the dude that he is. And, and that's all been exposed even before we got to the debates. It was exposed. Like, he called himself Average Joe. Why? Because he fucking took a train from D.C. to Delaware? Like, dude... That just shows you that even if you're, even if you're like a foot soldier of the oligarchs, a political foot soldier of the oligarchs like Joe Biden is, you still can't afford to live in Washington, D.C. That's all that shows. Or maybe it shows you that he fucking had more dealings and, we, uh, you know, wheelings and dealings in Delaware than he did in D.C. I don't know wanted to stay close to the ground to make sure that he kept getting reelected all the time. I, I mean, I, there, it could be a number of different things. But Biden's not all there, man. Like, it just felt like he was struggling. And I feel like part of it is, um, part of it is the attacks, right? Uh, I think people kind of went after this dude real hard. Uh, and fairly, I think, you know, like, if he wants to come out and be like, I am not a racist, but then you put out a crime bill that put out, put more black people in prison, well, do, what's your justification for that? Well, I'm really proud of my record. D Joe, there, what, are you, what are you talking about, buddy? Like, people are kind of slamming him, and I think he's, like, way too old, and I think his brain is not functioning, up, like, it can't handle the hypocrisy, so it's just kind of like, boom, it's hit a wall. You know, so, like, the more hypocrisies people throw at him, the more, like, the his brain is not able to do the mental gymnastics as fast as it would need to, uh, to, like, get those, get those, like, counterpoints out there. It, he's just not doing okay. And it's like, look, there's a lot of Republicans that fucking love him. And if he runs as a Republican, I'm sure, I'm sure he'd get the nomination over Trump, maybe, right? Like, it's a, it's very close. It would be very close, I think, if Joe Biden ran as a goddamn Republican. So, I, I don't know, man. Like, you're not really a Democrat. You've never really been a liberal. You just sided with them because, because you were, maybe, maybe, because you were running in Delaware. And that seemed to be a state where, it's like in California, you don't, you don't fucking run as a Republican to win. You run as a Republican probably to destabilize the Democratic Party in California a little bit. But it's mostly a Democratic state. And if Delaware was like that, yeah, of course you fucking ran as a, as a Democrat. It's just like, I'm just watching this dude and I'm like, your mental, your, your, your mental capacity is completely deteriorated. You are no longer able to do those mental gymnastics because you're too old and people are coming at you real hard, real fast, and your brain just can't keep up with all that. And I kind of feel bad for him a little bit, you know? I'm not saying that, like, his record doesn't deserve it because I think his record absolutely does deserve it. It's just at this point, like, Joe Biden, yo, pump the brakes, dog, and, like, go home you know, like, take a break, you are not Bernie Sanders, and I'll, and here's the reason for that, right, Bernie Sanders doesn't need to do any mental gymnastics to stand by what he says, Bernie Sanders has consistently believed 
exactly what he believes. Now, because because of being in, in, in as much prominent light as he was under the Barack Obama presidency, um, under the hope and change presidency, which wasn't really the hope and change presidency, but on being under that light, it kind of... Like, you have to do mental gymnastics because people people are now going to look at your record and be like, dude, you are fucking terrible. And you're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that bad. I'm, 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 I'm a man of the people. I'm, I'm Uncle Joe. What about your crime bill? What, what, about, what about you standing with segregationists? What about this, what about this thing that you, you're talking about? Uh, you know, uh, working women are not going to be good for America and so on and so forth. And he's like, well... You know, here's the thing, and it, it's just like it's not working because too much mental gymnastics at, at over the course of thirty years and over the course of what you've done has like slowed your brain down. Bernie's that hadn't had to do that because Bernie's been super hyper focused on his message and being consistent with it and progressing forward with that message. You've had to kind of do loops and jumps, you know, like you've had to do somersaults. That's like you know that video. Have you guys seen that video of Bernie Sanders, where where he's just like fucking ripping through the the DC subway, right? Like ripping through the metro, and he's just like real fucking business. That, that dude's a straight shooter. He's walking. He's walking straight. Not Joe Biden, man. Joe Biden's trying to do somersaults, you know, and he's trying to do like flips and shit. Just so, just so people are going to be, you know, they're, they're like, what, what's happening right now? Why, why, just walk. Can't you just walk? And he's like, nope, I got to do this backflip, right? You know, can, are you guys, you guys love me because I'm doing a backflip? And they're like, no, just fucking walk, dude. And then you burn out your energy and now you can't, like, now you're kind of slumped over the escalator. And once you get over the escalator, you just fall down and you didn't even make it out of the goddamn metro. That's where Joe Biden is. He's good. like, Joe, you gotta go, man. This is not gonna end well for you. And I think that's probably why Tulsi Gabbard does not attack him the way that she, the, the way that everybody else has is because he's just an old senile man that's having a hard time justifying his extremely terrible record, and he's been in public for way too long. With, with no consistency and he's wavering and he can't like hold himself together and and Tulsi but Tulsi went after her, Tulsi went after another DNC darling though she went after Kamala Harris um, and uh, which was incredible I watched a couple I watched a bunch of those clips of her going after Kamala Harris's criminal justice record uh, that where she's like imprisoning you know, like, she basically addressed, like, you imprisoned a bunch of people as attorney general. That was your fucking deal. Like, you imprisoned a bunch of people over, uh, over marijuana laws, and then when you, uh, when you laughed about it, when people asked you if you had smoked marijuana, which is like, dude, if you're fucking, if you're Kamala Harris's age, and you didn't smoke weed even once, like, I don't, I can't trust you. I can't fucking trust you. You've never smoked weed once? How do you know it's that bad then? How do you know it's that bad? I know, I know that I can't do certain, like, painkillers, right? Like, oxycodone, I've never tried oxycodone, but I know anything in that same category I can't do because I got prescribed Percocets once because uh, I got uh, six dental surgeries done in one day. Uh, don't recommend that. But I took, ha like, my mom... Um, was like take half of it just to see what happens so I did that and then she made me tea right because I like couldn't move my mouth and it, and that pain was starting to set in so I took half of one my mom made me tea I had the tea and I passed out I just passed the fuck out like my mom had to come in and like I'm still sitting up with the tea in my hand and she's like move the tea off off to the, the table like, I, do, I just clocked out. So, like, I know I don't, like, I don't want to try any of that sort of stuff. Because I've tried it and it's had a bad reaction. Like, I don't smoke weed all that much because I'm just, it's just not fun. Like, I'm, I, like, get hyper for a minute and then I just want to sleep. And then I do and then I sleep way too long and I feel groggy the next day. And it's just, 
Like, that's just the effects that it has on me. And, like, but I know that. But I'm not, I'm not doing what the fucking Reefer Madness videos are talking about. Like, conspiring and jumping off buildings and shit like that. Like, who, uh, who, who, I've never known anybody to get high and do that sort of shit. I've known, I've never known anybody to, to, like, smoke weed and then just be like, you know what sounds great right now? Heroin. No, it's like, you know what sounds great right now? All of the cake. That's usually, like, that's the worst that it gets. Like, what you should be concerned about is, like, oh, my God, is marijuana going to lead to, like, an increase of type 2 diabetes? Like, is it going to increase the the, di the diabetes in, in the American people? So, her laughing about putting people in prison for marijuana charges is, like, you don't have any fucking empathy for these people. And Tulsi Gabbard called her out on it. And then she goes, I'm proud of my record as OG. And I uh, I did the work. Yeah, you did the work for the prison industrial complex, Kamala. You didn't fucking do the work for people. You didn't try to reform people. You kept somebody in prison. In prison longer than what their sentence was supposed to be. Just so you can make more money off of them. Because you support prison labor. You support the prison industrial complex. People in your department committed perjury and you were like, I didn't know about any of this stuff. How could we consider you to be a leader when as an AG you couldn't even fucking lead a, a team of people to do the right thing? She got fucking decked by Tulsi Gabbard. I love that Tulsi's getting a little aggressive, by the way. Because she is, right? She was the most uh, Googled candidate after both debates. And after the first one, um, she got censored. Like, Google censored her. Uh, and, you know, uh, she's suing them. I know that much. Hold on, I'm sorry about this gross thing that's going to happen right now. Ugh. Allergies are kicking back in. But yeah, Google censored her because, because people want to know more about her. Because they like someone that's anti-war. They like someone that's going to stand up for the rights of people. They like someone that's going to actually, like, make sure the the budget of the country is more predicated on what the people need rather than what some fucking arms dealer needs. So, people like that. And they, went at, and they wanted to know more about her. And once they find out more about her, they fucking love her. They're like, yeah, let's do this shit. She got to like 160,000 fucking unique donations for the, to get qualified for the third debates so quickly. Because people find out who she is, what she stands for. She's no nonsense. She's no bullshit. And I think now she's, on, she's, a bit, she's now more on the offensive than she's ever been. And I think she realizes that she probably needs to right and and she's not being she needs to be on the offense towards people that aren't uh that the offense isn't really really going after like people have been going real hard after joe biden but people really haven't been going that hard progressives have been going that hard on kamala harris but like none of the dnc darlings and then what does she get what does she get for calling out kamala harris's record what does she get for 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 saying that kamala harris has has more more vested interest in the prison industrial complex than she does in reforming the criminal justice system and making sure that prison is about reforming criminals and making them uh, uh, helping them uh, 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 feel better as being a part of our society and not as outcasts to commit more crimes changing the structure of the criminal justice system so that uh, you know people don't feel like they need to commit these sort of crimes uh, that that uh, marijuana reform needs to happen drug law reform needs to happen so that we're not putting innocent people in prison and she and she's basically said Kamala Harris is to say for any of that shit. And what does she get for saying any all that stuff? She gets the media fucking attacking her and smearing her for her anti-war status. That's all they fucking have. All they have is that uh, uh, she went and met with Assad. So now she's a toady because she went and met with Assad, and she came back and she's like, I'm trying to figure out how to get a peaceful resolution to the clusterfuck that is Syria right now. I wanted to meet with that leader to be like, what's up, dude? What's going on? 
and, uh, and can we resolve this without your people dying? Like, don't you care about your people? Like, she, that's what she's going to, that's what she's about. And everybody's like, oh, you're a toady. You're an Assange apologist. And she's like, no, I think he's a brutal dictator. And I'm trying to talk to this brutal dictator to make him not be a brutal dictator. And they're like, well, th we'll say that he killed his own people. It's like, there's no evidence for that. Do an investigation. I think Cuomo said, like, the uh, American intelligence communities and the UN has suggested that he is... Like, you're, you're making a judgment off of a suggestion? You don't have hard evidence. You don't have hard evidence about any of this. And then you want her to just go along with this with this propaganda bullshit. Just so just so you can continue to become the propaganda machine of the American war economy. And that's what it is. That's what all of these mainstream corporate outlets are. These corporate media outlets, they're just the propaganda wing of the American war economy. Because that's what that's uh, they prop that shit up, man. They prop that shit up and they get people riled up. They get you scared. You know, they start throwing out security and, you know, you, you need to say Assad is a bad... You, say it. Say it. Instead of listening to what Tulsi's saying, which is I am trying to come up with a peaceful resolution for not just the security of America, but to make sure that we don't have these regime change wars, which creates an, an enormous refugee crisis. The refugee crisis that spills over not only into our European allies, but also into America. And right now, the United States wants to push for a total war. And CNN, MSNBC, uh, you know, uh, the, all, a bunch of these other fucking places uh, are all trying to get her to just say, like, say he's a bad guy, say it. It's like, that's not how you start a peace negotiation, Cuomo. It's just not how you do it, buddy. You, like, if you're, if you're trying to debate the table, if you're at the debate table and you come out and you're just like, you're a fucking asshole and you're a fucking monster. Let's talk about peace. It's like, whoa, that's a little aggressive, isn't it? How are we supposed to talk about peace if you're coming at somebody with that much aggression? If you can talk to them in rational, truthful terms without throwing anger at them, maybe you'll get them to... Maybe, you, maybe you'll get them to do something. It's not a guarantee, but you'll probably get a little bit closer. The media is the propaganda wing of the American war economy. And that is proven with the way that they are treating Tulsi Gabbard after the debates. After she went after the goddamn Democratic darling uh, of the prison industrial complex, of the, of the prison labor market, of, the, uh, 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 of this uh, drug war, drug war AG, Kamala Harris. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoyed this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY independent socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.